Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, all of those who are present here today. In the first place, I do not speak Spanish very well. So this oppressive language which has been opposed, um, which re continues to repress us in Bolivia is not my first language. I learned it when I was 20 years old. And that is why I don't pronounce some things in well in Spanish. But in any case, I'm going to forge forward today. I am an executive of the Farmers Union in Bolivia. This central organization covers all of the people in the agricultural sector from different areas and ecological systems. I also defend the peoples, the Yungas and the Chapales, who are coca producers. Today I'm going to talk only about coca. I bring you here some coca that I want to show you today, and I have coca in my mouth at this particular moment. Here is the sacred coca leaf. You, it's important for you to see this. This has been used by our people for a thousand years. We have bled for this crop, and we have used it for so many different medicinal reasons over the years. As indigenous people, we are respectful of this leaf. We have a very deep respect for it. A respect that comes from the immemorial times, because coca, that means tree in Quechua or Opadam. This is the ni scientific name of what is proper to us who live in the Gran Tamintin Soy. Our grandparents have left this as inheritance to us. This is a legacy for us. Many, many years ago, there had been an Añosta, and that Añosta didn't have any re sexual relations with any women and died and of a disease. And the communal farmers broke it in half and planted it, and these two leaves came forward and were transformed into a bush. And there was, was an indigenous person who wanted to try what the leaf tasted like, and that is how we discovered that this has many different properties. It's not just any old thing. It has it, it has properties that are appropriate to fat and milk and other types of main food groups. We have had to subsist. We've had to suffer hunger, uh, misery, exploitation, oppression, with coca in our mouths to keep on surviving. The indigenous people in our country works from dawn till dusk but chewing on the coca leaf. The indigenous people in our country is working in the mines with coca in their mouth. And the indigenous builds huge buildings like this with coca in their mouth. And the indigenous people drive on long distances on our highways chewing on coca. The student who is studi studying in the university and has to stay up all night, and he's chewing on the coca leaf too, so he won't go to sleep. So the coca is like our own body in Bolivia. It keeps us from being tired. Currently, the governors, the different governing bodies have divided our country around. Now it's a political matter. The coca is an economic matter. It's also a social topic. And coca has become a religion to us because with the sacred leaf, 
we, we carry out a right to the Wakis and the Itis and the, um, all of the pantheon of gods that we worship. We pray to the rivers and the hills and the sacred rivers. Coca is everywhere. It's in our home, it's in our community, in the Aymara culture, in the Aymara culture, in the kitchen, and in Bolivia, it's everywhere. If the child is born from his, is born of his mother, the first he, thing he tries is coca. With coca, we have to survive. If the young, if the child grows up and becomes a young, person or young student, he goes into military service. We have to celebrate that with coca. If the person who, a, a person dies, then we have to celebrate that with our coca leaf. So coca accompanies us from the moment we are born until we die. It is a, the same thing as Pachamama, and it is our cradle, and it is our grave. We can't lose this leaf. I am talking about the leaf, the coca leaf. I'm talking to a mutual respect. I'm, talking, I'm not talking about denaturalized uses of coke, the prostitution of this sacred leaf. But I am talking about how we have to handle this as a sacred object. And as far as religion goes, this coca leaf is like a Bible to us. It would be a green Bible, if you wanted to say that, where, where we have to preach from the past to the present to the future. We need to, we know what needs to happen in Bolivia. We know that our president will not carry out his presidential period well, because the coca tells us this. And we know that the coca has had its ups and downs and had its lucky days and its unlucky days. But in our ancestry, it has always been something lucky. This is what our great wise men tell us. This is the topic that we use in all of the confederation of indigenous groups in Bolivia. This is the topic that we vibrates and beats in our heart for the indigenous people in the hole in the valley, up in the hilltide. And this idea, it's very important for me to transmit this to you because nobody has given me any kind of recipe of what I should say, but I have to talk from my heart and I have to let you know what we feel and how we use the coca. And this is what I am telling you today. <laughs> 